Here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. And welcome, brothers, sisters, working class heroes. This is the Rick Smith Show. Thanks so much for being here today on the big program. Lots to get to, lots to talk about. Going to start off welcoming our friends in Madison, Wisconsin, listening on Double Devils Radio, WTTN, 1580 AM, 92.7, and on AM 540 WAUK and 101 FM, The Shaw in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Great to have the forward state on board Look forward to hearing from you. Great to have you. Uh, Lots to get to today. Lots to talk about. We're going to get into the Supreme Court. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Republicans doing what Republicans do. How great, how wonderful uh, Miss Jackson is. How fabulous of a person she is. What a great candidate. Oh, my goodness. She knows the law. She speaks so well. Uh, you know, every compliment, backhanded or not, but still, I guess, you know, not gonna, not gonna support her. Uh, came out of the committee eleven to eleven, dead, deadlocked. Uh, but it looks like, as I said from the beginning, she's going to get onto the Supreme Court, and that drives the GOP absolutely out of their minds. Like I said earlier, you know. Susan Collins came out. There's one Republican, and now you got two more. You have uh, Mittens, which you knew Mitt Romney was, at least I knew Mitt Romney was going to come out, uh, if no other reason than to tick off Donald Trump and Lisa Murkowski. So there's three. I said possibly five still might happen. Three to five was my guess. I got the three number. Uh, Now, again, what happened to the Republican Party? This woman is qualified, went through the the confirmation process, all of the gotcha questions, all of the craziness. I mean, that confirmation process, Republican nuttery to have to sit there with a straight face and, and go through this stuff. I ask legal questions, ask legal opinions. What's a what define a woman? <laughs> and then to beat her up when she won't fall into your into your trap. Um, now, Lindsey Graham said uh, she's a person of exceptionally good character, respected by her peers, and someone who has worked hard to achieve her current position. Yet, yet he says he were in charge. She wouldn't even have gotten a hearing. Where is the disconnect? How crazy have they gotten? How, how bad is it now in the Senate? Remember, this is supposed to be the upper chamber. These are the, supposed to be the adults. Remember Ben Sass? Impeccable credentials she has. Deep knowledge of the law. Great story, great person, all, ki- all, all kinds of wonderful, I mean, effusive with praise, but no, 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 no. Somebody's watching. Uh, he even talked about how when the cameras are on, the quote-unquote, his word, U.S. Senator, uh, he said the jackassery uh, then commences, I think he was he meant Ted Cruz. Uh, but still, but still, Senator Sass not going to vote for her, or so he says, and didn't in the committee. No, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe the bigger picture is the GOP um, knows something that we don't. I don't think so. Sad reality, these are folks who are have, have, have bought the T-shirt. Uh, they bought the hat. They're, they're, they've got their flag out in front of their house. They got the team. They're, they're on Team Red. And that's how they see the world. And this is sad. This is destructive to our democracy. It's destructive to our nation. And it's tearing us apart. Look, when I looked at someone like Kavanaugh, when I looked at someone like Amy Coney Barrett, they've got serious problems. Should have been addressed. Kavanaugh I had a real problem with. Some of the allegations I thought should have been investigated more. But Gorsuch and Barrett, You voted for them. 
as much as I disagreed with their ideology, as much as I disagreed with their activism, the president put them up. There is nothing absolutely heinous about their behavior. They're on the court. That's how things work. Or at least that's how they used to work. They used to work that both sides would choose someone. That the majority party, the president, would go to the minority party and say, here's who we're thinking about. Are there people on this list that you think you could support? And then they would choose from that list. Instead, what's happened? And Republicans did a masterful job of this. Uh, the Federalist Society you know, began honing candidates very early on. They began molding people that they wanted to be on the court, and they moved them through certain certain parameters to get them on the court and trial tested them, focus group tested them, think tank approved them so that ideologically they would be corporatists. Ideologically, they would be the culture warriors that they need them to be on the courts. But more importantly, the, the corporatists got to make sure you pay in the bills. They don't do that on the left. The Democrats don't have that kind of infrastructure. Sorry, as much as the right wants to go, no, no, the left's horrible. They're just not that well coordinated. Sorry. Uh, I, I wish they were. I do. I wish there were a, a left-leaning Federalist Society that go, no, no, we're equal and we're equally as bad. Uh, the sad reality, as it was brought to my attention today, the Republicans, and I've been saying this for a long time, the Republicans have no ideas. They have no plan. They have no platform. They have no direction other than destruction. And Mitch McConnell has been very honest about that. The Republicans were always about honest about it. 2020, they had no platform. We don't need a platform. Whatever Donald wants, we're going to do. We'll do what he says. Rudderless. And when they do come up with an idea, it's a bad one. So I got a lot of that to get to today. I'm, I'm We're going to get into Rick Scott's 11-point horrible which, you know, I don't think I've spent enough time on. I've talked about, I spent a little bit of time here and there, drips and drabs. I think we really need to dig elbow deep into what Rick Scott really thinks, really thinks we should be moving on. Remember, this guy wants to do, within five years, sunset every federal program. Everything. Kiss Social Security goodbye, kiss Medicare goodbye, kiss Medicaid goodbye, kiss a farm bill goodbye, kiss welfare program book, food stamps, kiss it all goodbye. And what kind of chaos does that mean for, for seniors, for, for the working families, for the working poor? What does it mean for children? Well, it means more for rich people and less for everyone else. It means desperation. It means poverty. It means, well, the Dickinsonian world that conservatives have always wanted. Desperate workers, pliable workers, people who are just desperate enough to agree to do anything you want them to do for poverty wages and horrible, deplorable conditions and never, never, never thinking to, oh my gosh, unionize and demand better. That, that really is conservative utopia. Uh, desperate workers begging for a mere existence and never, never the profits. Ah, what a world that would be. Profits abound. Millions and millions. You imagine if you could go through a, a period of time where, you know, people were, were hungry and child poverty was going up and, uh, and the billionaires could make like $1.7 trillion dollars and oh wait a minute we just did that never mind never mind never mind <laughs> never mind uh some good news however shout out to our friends in colorado uh good on you for guaranteeing the right to an abortion their governor jared polis uh, signed the bill today i believe enshrining the right uh, for women to reproductive freedom so if nothing else uh pot and uh reproductive freedom now are the Colorado way. Uh, so when every other Republican state across this country uh, bans it and the Supreme Court overturns Roe, at least Colorado 
will be a place where people can go, unless your state is one of those that wants to, well, make sure that you can't leave the state. And ladies, I'm, I'm, I come back to this moment. We are in a, we are at a, at a second in time where the control mongers, where the religious zealots among us, they are watching. Because Roe, and I've said this before, Roe is the first in the battle against taking over your body. Uh, the, Roe is the first in the, in the battles here. The next will obviously, and it came up during uh, the, the, the Supreme Court Justice confirmation hearing of Ketanji Brown Jackson uh, on contraception. You know, Griswold, they believe, was wrongly decided. The privacy uh, decision that you, as married couples, because that was what the, the decision was about, married couples being able to, to, to purchase birth control to decide how many children they're going to have, that, they believe, was decided wrongly. The next battle is going to be on the Supreme Court level is going to be over over Plan B and over the pill. Again, can you believe this? This is the world that we're in. And Republicans have taken us there. So I'm going to want to hear your thoughts. 1-866-416-RICK. 1-866-416-7425. You want to jump in on that? Give me some thoughts, questions, comments. Because uh, I got to tell you, I thought this was decided law. And remember, John Roberts, during his confirmation, balls and strikes, decided law, starry decisis. We weren't going to re—we weren't going to rewrite everything. We weren't going to overturn things. And yet, that's all they've really done. They're attempting to repeal the 20th century and take us back to the good old days of the the 80s and 90s. And I'm not sure which 80s and 90s, the 1780s and 90s or the 1880s and 90s. But I know, I know it's not the 1980s and 90s. Because we'd be looking at these Republicans like the zealots and, and freaks that they really have become. And I'm hoping, I really am hoping, I'm hoping sanity at some point goes, folks, um, step it back a bit. Just just my hope. And an example. Perfect example. According to the American Library Association, uh, they have released a report that shows that over 700 challenges to libraries, schools and university materials happened in 2021. The most in the last 20 years. We are we are on a book banning frenzy. Why? Because we don't want we don't want critical thinkers. We don't want people with thoughts. We don't want people who would destiny. We don't want people who are who are going to take control of their lives. No, we want desperate workers going to show up and do the crappy jobs for for poverty level wages and never, never, never put their thoughts, uh, never put their opinions, never demand better. This is the world that what we're heading for. This is what they want from us. And this, this, folks, scary stuff. Uh, before we take a break, let's quick go to the phones and get Alice on line one. Alice, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing good. I, I just want to say this. It doesn't matter if it's a religion. It doesn't matter if it's an ethnic group. It doesn't matter if it's a nation. Any of them that refuse to move on and expand the horizons and they want to go backwards, it's a destruction. And we, we know this because that's what one of the problems with Rome, the fall of Rome, was when um, the Christians took over. And if you don't believe me, you can actually find that historically. It's historically accurate. And so I guess they're going to do that to us. So, you know, we might as well just uh, let them go on and destroy things. I think not. Yeah, or, or to take their advice, you know, if it's going to happen, just lay back and enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but but I'm serious, you know, anybody that refuses to move on uh, and they want to live in the past, they stagnate and they die. So obviously we already know they're not the brightest bunch 
going, so they just show it. So you have a good evening, Rick. Good, good stuff, Alice. Appreciate the thoughts. Love to hear yours as well. You can give me a call, one eight six six four one six rick one eight six six four one six seven four two five or email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. I'm going to take a quick break. Right back on the other side with your thoughts as well. If you're just joining us, make sure you grab the podcast. Always there, always available, and I hear it is fabulous. Make sure you grab it wherever you grab your podcast from iTunes, iHearts, Podbean, to Stitcher, and everywhere in between. Quick break. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Come to talk. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania to the auto factories of Michigan to the modern makers room, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good-paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. I am a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I feel very connected to my West Virginian roots in being part of a union. We've always been known to generate energy here. Renewable energy would definitely help generate jobs and get people back to work. If we don't start bringing in more jobs, more and more people are gonna leave. Solar, wind, hydro, these can help reinvigorate West Virginia's economy. It's time to give West Virginia a chance. Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. 1-866-416-RICK. 1-866-416-7425. Thoughts, questions, comments, something on your mind. You can email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. So, you know, we're talking about book burn it, banning. Burning's coming next. Understand, these are folks who don't want critical thinkers. They don't want educated folk. That, no, no, don't want any of that stuff. And it shows. It shows in our corporate policy. It shows in some of the stuff that, that comes out in our, well, in what they push on the, the government level. But The Intercept today came out with a report, thought very interesting. Uh, the behemoth over at Amazon, uh, evidently, some planned new internal communication app that they've got uh, to fil- facilitate conversation between uh, workers on the warehouse floor. They've banned bunches of words. And I'll bet you, I'll bet you'll guess one of the top words that they banned. I'll bet you. Begins with a U. And well, their workers at JFK 8 in Staten Island, New York, just voted for one. That's right. They banned the word union. Uh, they ban the word uh, compensation. They ban the word pay raise. Uh, <laughs> of course they do because you know what? You know they ban the words living wage. They even ban the word vaccine, which is really kind of weird. They ban the word slave labor. You know how many people use the word slave labor in a daily, in a, in a daily conversation? Oh yeah, probably a lot of people at Amazon. So you might want not want that in your daily communication at work. So what you do, you ban that. And then what word do you ban along with that? Freedom. Because at work, guess what you don't have any of? Unless you have a union, of course. You don't have any freedom. And the reason I bring this up is because there are tons of stories going around today that point out this Am- this intercept story and all of these words that, that Amazon is banning from this internal communications app. Because they don't want you thinking in this way. The, the, the word grievance has been a band in justice, diversity, ethics, fairness, representation, favoritism, unfair, um, none of this stuff. They're going to ban it all. Even even ban the word restrooms, which is interesting, very interesting because well, <laughs> because they uh I they don't want you really going there either cuz the stories that we've heard and we've We've heard a bunch of them. Uh, we've heard a bunch of them going into the bathroom following people. Uh, we've had a bunch of them, you know, timing how long people do go to the bathroom. 
I mean, it's it's quite remarkable the things that that go on and the things that happen. It's well, it is the world that we live in. Let's go to the phone lines. We've got Joe on line two. Joe, how are we doing today? Hey, Joe. Good evening, Rick. How are you? I'm not too bad. What's on your mind, buddy? Great, great. Great, great, brother. Yeah, uh, they talk about critical uh, race theory. we got to teach uh, critical class theory in our classes. We've got to let people know the history of what it, about what it means to have a large number of workers organized under collective bargaining agreements and to be under, under the protection of a union banner, how that benefits communities as a whole, how that benefits our middle class as a whole. The youth has to be educated on these matters. They don't know the language of the labor movement. They don't know the songs. They don't know the culture, the history that's been cultivated by workers over the last oh, 100 years or so as they take on capitalist corporate powers. I am right so, there 100% with you, brother. Uh, I'd like to make... Definitely, definitely, brother. Yeah, we got to push uh, to make the month of May Labor Month. They have Women's Month, uh, Black History Month. I'd like to see uh, this is a movement being pushed to make May the month of labor. labor well, History obviously, month. May 1st is May Day. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, you think of all of the events that go oh, yeah, on a lot around May it. Day. Uh, I'm I'm right there with you. Let's let's figure out how to do that. <laughs> That's great, but hey, thank you for all you do. Thank you for uh, labor history and two. Always a big fan, and uh, thank you for all the inspiration you give to the guys out on the front lines, on the picket lines, and who's out there organizing. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Uh, no, absolutely. We should be doing that. May should be because of May Day and everything that it's there. Because understand, May Day around the world is 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 our Labor Day. Uh, and it should have been our Labor Day, and you know, there's a whole story that goes along with that as well. But um, I think Joe's right. Let's let's try and make uh, May Labor um, Labor Month. Now, interestingly enough, for our our friends in Wisconsin, uh, for our friends in Wisconsin, they've done something that I think a lot of states should be doing. Uh, they they actually have labor education in the schools. It's not a lot. It is some though. And when we were in Wisconsin back in 2011. Uh, when the great uprising, when Scott Walker was attacking and attacked public sector workers the way he did with Act 10, one of the things that that sparked that uprising were those those kids who were the TAs and the, uh, the, the those those frontline union members at the University of Wisconsin who saw those attacks in writing in that Act 10 and and acted, and they went back to their labor education and they understood what it meant. And they organized and they came together. And it was it was an incredible, an incredible time that I spent there. In fact, I spent two weeks uh, there in Madison, sleeping on the floor of the Capitol, broadcasting out of Representative Brett Halsey's office. And I'll tell you, it's a time I'll never forget uh, because the people of Madison were incredible. Uh, the, the, the camaraderie, the solidarity and the fight, the fight to say, you know what, we demand better for our children in the future. And, and, and I, I never forgot that. And we need to take that spirit and we need to move it forward. Cause look, ultimately lost a lot in Wisconsin, but from what I understand and from the people that I've talked to, the fighting spirit is there and it's across this country. We're seeing it. We saw it in New York with those workers overcoming almost incredible, impossible odds to organize at Amazon. We're seeing it in, in Bessemer, Alabama, as as workers are, are fighting the, the the behemoth of Amazon to organize. And we're seeing it every day across this country as workers are fighting to make better lives. And you know what? When we come together and we fight, we can win. We can do better. We can make better lives together. It's that simple in my view. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can email me, Rick at the Rick Smith Show dot com. Also, if you're just joining us, make sure you grab the podcast wherever you grab your podcasts. Go we'll take a quick break right back after this. Stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Time to talk. You'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. There you go, Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of the team committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood.
Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So President Biden called Fox News one of the most destructive forces in the United States. He also called Fox News owner Rupert Murdoch the most dangerous man in the world. And, you know, I would argue the country. I, I still think Putin's worse. Although, you know, to be honest, you know, I think Mur- Murdoch, given what he's done to a generation in this country, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I look at what's going on over in Ukraine. I look at the, the horrible propaganda coming out of Russia. And I got to tell you, war crimes, when, when the president said it, that he, Putin is a cr- war criminal and the Republicans were, oh, you know, he's weak, he's feeble. Oh, you know, he tripped over himself when, when the president said he's got to go. Uh, they, Oh, look what he's done. He was right. And here to share some thoughts on all of this and, well, much more. I go to my military expert, person I turn to anytime I want to talk about military stuff, my good friend Rich Ojeda. He's also the national spokesperson for No Dems Left Behind. Rich, thanks for taking time for us, brother. Anytime, brother. You know, I always enjoy being on your show. So uh, let's start with the president and uh, and and the most dangerous channel, the most dangerous man, uh, the most dangerous all of that. Uh, you buy it? Is, is he is he right? Yeah, I, you know, I'll tell you this. I saw something today about New Zealand, and they asked New Zealand, you know, why they didn't have so many problems like we have in the United States of America, and their answer was because we denied Rupert Murdoch the ability to come here and set up a station to basically poison our people. Uh, you know, I, we know people that watch Fox News and Fox News only are poorly misinformed. And they're they're literally weaponized. And that's what Rupert Murdoch has done. And the sad part about this is, is that there should be abilities to deal with people like him and stop him with what he's doing. He is literally stealing people. He's he's destroying their minds and and basically setting them up uh, to be anti-American while they're living here in America. Yeah. And and look, I, I point to that F channel and one of their main hosts, the the bow tie guy. Uh, who, you know, the, the big story that came across my desk today was uh, evidently the bow tie said, what if these bodies of tortured dead civilians were staged? What if they're fake? What if the Ukrainian military killed them and then blamed Russia? I'm not saying any of this is true. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just asking the question, why can't we ask these questions? Um, because that's Russian propaganda there, bow tie. Yeah, he's he's doing that because he's trying to actually make people think, you know, and, and, and I mean, look, you know, I, I watched and you did, too. I'm sure you saw President Zelensky's face today as he was touring Buka and you could see the pain on his face. You know, here's a person that has done everything right and his country has been targeted by a big bully is what it is. And, you know, he's watching his own citizens with their hands tied behind their back, dumped in open graves with bullet uh, uh, bullet holes in the back of their skulls. I mean, this is war crimes. You know, Vladimir Putin, even though he's not the one squeezing the trigger, he's responsible for this. And I'm telling you right now, I I think that uh, nothing changes. Russia needs to be placed on a third world country list and nothing changes until Vladimir Putin is held accountable for what he has done. No sanctions are ever going to be lifted. Kick them out of the G7, the G8, G20. Get rid of them. Make them literally nothing more than a third world country until Vladimir Putin is gone. And only then will they be allowed to come back. You know, this is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, you know, and and then, uh, you know, their anger because two helicopters from Ukraine happened to fly 12 miles into Russia and blow up a, a, a fuel depot. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Russia's Russia's crying about that. You invaded their country. You have sent missiles into housing uh, uh, districts, into hospitals. I mean, we've seen children and, 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 and mothers, uh, uh, you know, severely wounded, in some cases dead. Unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. And, and I go back to when, when you know, President 
Biden said that uh, he he can't continue to lead this country, that he should be removed. And I, I remember the Republicans and the, the, the F channel mouthpieces losing their mind. Oh, he's feeble. Oh, he misspoke. And I said, I don't think he misspoke. I think the guy's got to go. And I'm hoping his people take him out. I'm hoping if it's not the oligarchs, I'm hoping it's the people around him. Or I'm hoping it's the people of the citizens of that city, of that country who go, you know what? This isn't who we are because they've got family in Ukraine. Yeah, that's what that's what needs to happen. And if it doesn't happen, I tell you right now, I hope President Zelensky sends every sniper that he has into Russia. And I don't care if it takes him 20 years. When he steps outside, he's going to get it. You know, Vladimir Putin will no longer uh, be allowed to leave Russia. You know, he may fly to North Korea. He may fly to Saudi Arabia. He may fly to China. But that's about as good as he's going to get, because if he flies anywhere else, and I believe that President Biden also talked about basically uh, 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 hitting him with uh, with with with, I I guess I don't know what 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 the word is. I I apologize. But basically making him literally a criminal on the world stage so that he won't be able to go anywhere. And, you know, we have to hope that the people of Russia that are struggling, that the oligarchs that are losing their yachts and all these things, we have to hope that they are starting to look at each other and say, this has to stop. I'm not going to lose everything that I've worked my life for, all because of this bully who decides he wants to go in there and basically steal land from Ukraine. Yeah, now the president said that, uh, you know, he's a war criminal. Uh, This guy is brutal. And what's happening in Bukha is is an outrage, and everyone's seen it. And and we have we've seen some of the photos, we've seen you know some of the satellite stuff that that's been shown. Um, if these aren't war crimes, I don't know what is, and and the globe can't. I I, I don't know how you can allow this to stand. Um, and the question it, it then becomes: crimes. Are we doing enough? Because look, I think people are outraged, and is there more that we can do without us becoming? Uh, entwined in World War III? Because I think most people are like, look, we we got to do everything we can do until it's our soldiers and our boots on the ground. Or do you disagree? No, I agree. I agree. You know, that's one of the reasons why we're not basically doing a no-fly zone, because that puts us potentially against a Russian. And then all of a sudden, if we shoot the Russian down, then all of a sudden we're involved in this. Joe Biden is doing everything right, and we're doing everything right. We've got troops in Latvia. we got troops in Poland. You know, we're helping, and, and we're, facilita- we're facilitating moving equipment all the way to the border of Ukraine. I mean, we're doing everything that we need to do. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, I believe that with what's going on, Russia is done. They failed to think this through. Right now, the Russian tanks are having a hard time getting uh, uh, m- repaired. And the reason why is because the parts that were used to fix the Russian tanks come from Ukraine. So guess what? That's <laughs> shut off. You're not getting anything. That's a fact. That's absolute truth. So, I mean, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, did you not think this through at all? Because I don't think Vladimir Putin did. He thought this was going to be a three or four day. They thought 72 hours and they would be in, Ru- in, in, in Kiev and everything would be great. You know, they absolutely miscalculated this. But uh, I'm telling you, you know, the equipment that's being sent, the javelins, the stinger missiles, I mean, every single day, the Russians are losing more equipment. They've had over 600 tanks destroyed, you know, and I'm telling you what they have lost so far in a month is more than it's, it's way more than what we lost in 20 years in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, I mean, this this is absolutely a failure. Uh, and, and I'm honestly thinking that they must really not be telling Vladimir Putin what's going on because, you know, obviously he's a dictator and they're probably scared of him. But, uh, I mean, he cannot think that uh, that the Russia is is doing it. They actually tried to say that uh, they they fulfilled their first mission and now they're going to pull back and, and they're going to go for the Donbass region. Let me tell you, that was just for him to save face because they've got their butts whipped. Yeah. Are you surprised? I mean, I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised that 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 they've been I mean, this bad. I mean, you know, I've always been told my whole life, that, you know, the big bad Russian military that, you know, this is this is a world global superpower. Are you surprised that they have they've fallen this flat? Let me tell you something. In 2014, when they invaded Crimea, I was one of the first people to say those are T-62s. You know, I mean, we're talking old raggedy equipment 
You know, I'm like, hey, something's not right here. You know, I mean, they got some raggedy equipment. And then when you think about it, they are absolutely waging war on rail, rail. They use trains and you can't even get 40 miles into your next door neighbor and you're running out of food, water and, and fuel. I mean, this is a colossal failure. The truth is, is that we've all thought that Russia was the big, bad, tough bear. You know, they are a paper tiger is what they are. And I'm telling you right now, I have no fear. I have no fear. And I'm serious. I think that these, here's the thing. Anytime you're fighting somebody on their own soil, you have to understand it's going to be a fight. You know, we beat Saddam Hussein's army in 30 days, but then we found ourselves in an insurgency where the average citizens in, in Iraq that looked like they were nice, smiley, happy people on the in the daytime, at nighttime, were bare, and we were hitting them the next day. You know, and that's what's going on right now. We're fighting people in their own Afghanistan, fighting people in their own backyard. They know the hiding places, and they know where to hit you from. And that's what's been going on in Ukraine, and Russia has failed miserably. Yeah, no, I mean... But you, you say you're not afraid of them. I mean, they're still a nuclear power. Are we, are we not That's concerned? It. That's it. Well, no, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, you got to be careful that Vladimir Putin don't realize my life is over. And maybe he becomes that guy that says, let's do it all in. But honestly, I, I kind of believe that there's always enough people around that are smart enough to realize we can't allow that to happen. It's like when General Milley called China you know, at the end of Trump's administration, because he wanted to say, hey, look, man, don't worry about it. We've got our eyes on this guy. We're not going to let him do anything stupid. I'd like to think that there's enough people in Russia, these oligarchs and these these generals that realize that, you know what, with Putin gone, it gives them an opportunity to have better. It gives them an opportunity to take that spot. You know, I'd think that the, the number two guy in Russia right now has probably already had a lot of conversations with these oligarchs that have lost everything. So, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not worried about that. I gotta think he's not walking near any open windows, though, because out of fear of Putin having him pushed out. But that's oh, just absolutely. my thought. Uh, you're listening absolutely. to the Rick Smith Show here with Rich Ojeda. Rich is the national spokesperson for No Dems Left Behind. No Dems Left Behind dot com. The website. We'll get links out on social media. I can check out uh, the work that they do. I wanted to get you since you brought up Trump. I wanted to get up the get your thoughts on the fact that the president said that uh, he thought you know Trump should be prosecuted. And is confident that uh, you know some of the things that are coming out to, uh, in, from his inner circle that he's confident that uh, uh, that may actually happen. Thoughts? Yeah, you know the Department of Justice just basically come out, and what they said is you know they're trying to find intent, and now the people that collect the records, what are they called? I'm trying to sit and think what they are. The, the the presidential diarist, the person who takes all the notes and everything like that. What they're saying is is by Donald Trump telling them on the 5th, stand back, we don't need you, and basically cut them off. They say, iced out. Now what they're saying is, if that happened, they're saying that, that basically shows that Donald Trump had intent because he knew that something was going to happen the next day. They're saying that the diarist for the president actually may have the ability to take him down. Wow. Uh, and look, I, I want him held accountable. I want people who yeah. break the law held accountable, just like you would be held accountable, just like I would be held accountable. And and what's interesting to me is all the things we've been talking about for the for the last couple of years uh, seem to be coming true, truer and truer each and every day. Uh, so for me, the hope is is that we hold criminals accountable uh, as we would each each and every one of us. Now, your organization, No Dems Left Behind, uh, lots of folks out there running for office. Uh, lots of people that we need to be putting into power. Uh, and, and look, I've said, if you're a working class person, get out there, run for something. I don't care if it's dog catcher, but we need we need people like you, like me, uh, people who work work hard, play by the rules. We need those folks in the halls of power, don't we? Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, I'm actually bringing a guy on my nightly live here in a couple of days to do nothing but explain to the people who get on there every night how to unionize. You know, I'm telling you, that's it's time to strike while the while the while the iron is hot. You know, Amazon now has has a union in one location. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it's time for the unions to step up to the plate and take it all back. Uh, I, I'm really excited about that. I really do believe that we're going to see Donald Trump held accountable. I think that everybody was worried that the Department of Justice wasn't doing anything, and then we realized 
Nobody knew that the Department of Justice was investigating Rudy Giuliani until they kicked his door in and stole all these burner phones. Nobody <laughs> knew that the Department of Justice was going to do anything against the leaders of the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers until they indicted them. So, you know, I believe right now that, that, that what they're doing, they're, they're being as thorough as possible. But I'm feeling very comfortable that in the end, we're going to see Donald Trump held accountable and we're going to absolutely see all these people that elevated him. I think they're going to go down. They're going to become pariahs, and that's where they should be. There you go. Rich, I appreciate the time. As always, great stuff, my friend. Look forward to talking to you again real soon. All right, my brother. Airborne. Our good friend, Rich Ojeda. Make sure you check out the work that he does over at No Dems but Left Behind. Going to take a quick break. Right back with your thoughts. 1-866-416-RICK. 1-866-416-7425. This is The Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Come to talk. Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1968. That was the day that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered by an assassin's bullet in Memphis, Tennessee. He was in Memphis to support AFSCME sanitation workers who were out on strike, fighting for better wages and working conditions. In the later 1960s, Dr. King's organizing had increasingly turned toward addressing the poverty, unemployment, and unfair working conditions faced by black workers. As we pause to honor the memory and legacy of Dr. King today, let us take a moment to reflect on his words. In a message he delivered to a gathering of Teamster Local 815 shop stewards on May 2nd, 1967. In his speech, Dr. King discussed the wave of labor organizing in the 1930s. He recounted the difficulties faced by workers forging new unions. He said, yet there was one thing that was won, one thing that was fought for as indispensable, one thing for which all the pain and sacrifice was justified, namely union recognition. It seemed so minuscule a victory that people outside the labor movement scorned it as, in fact, just another defeat. But those who understood, union recognition meant the real beginning. Union meant strength, and recognition meant the employer's acknowledgement of that strength. And the two meant the opportunity to fight again for further gains with united and multiplied power. As contract followed contract, the pay envelope fattened and fringe benefits and job rights grew to the mature work standards of today. All of these started with winning first union recognition. Dr. King died standing up with black workers fighting for that very recognition. Like what you hear? Check out more at laborhistoryin2.com. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show, where working people come to talk. Sandy sent me an email during the break that uh, said, Rick, I work for a large employer uh, and they monitor our computers daily for certain keywords, union being one of them. You'd be surprised at how many employers actually monitor their daily, the daily keystrokes of their workers. This kind of thing cannot continue. Workers have to organize, have to fight back. Uh, and, and look, this is, this is the reality. Uh, this kind of surveillance state has, has been allowed to happen for far too long. And it's creeping into everything that we do. Again, not new. You know, I've, I've said for years, you know, you, you hear some of these horror stories. You know, there was the, the story in Massachusetts where, you know, the, the, uh, the one company put the RFID chip into people's hands. So they could, you know, they could scan in and out easier. They could use the vending machine easier. Uh, and it would track their movement throughout the building. Um, and you go, really? You would, you would really let someone shoot a, a, you know, a, an RFID chip into your body just so it would be easier to scan in and out so you wouldn't have to wear a badge? You would really do that? And sadly, they've convinced people, oh, it's just easier. And the other mentality, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you care if someone's watching? Well, you know, this kind of stuff, this kind of invasive behavior, well, it filters into everything you do because a lot of people take their work computers home. A lot of people take their, their phones and do work on their phones. And now you've got 
this this dividing line no longer there, very blurred to where corporate America is watching your every keystroke, watching everything you do and monitoring everything. And Amazon's been one of the biggest drivers of this. Amazon, outside of making sure that you get all of your things within two days, is a gigantic tech tech company. They're always figuring out how to how to do time studies and how to monitor things and how to how to use AI to squeeze you know seconds out of people. You know some of the horror stories I've heard from Amazon workers. You know they're they're constantly you know wearing you know you know scanner technology that if they're not picking something up every couple of seconds it's beeping. If they're not scanning something every couple of seconds there's it's beeping. It's constant constant stimulus, constant harassment. And now this story has come out that Amazon is using this app called Monitor or Mentor. It's called Mentor that's tracking uh, their delivery drivers. So whatever their delivery drivers are doing, it's tracking their every movement. So everything that they do, their eye movements, everything is being recorded. It's being, it's being tracked. It's being, well, it's being time studied. And, and workers being disciplined. And this is one of those things that eventually filters down to everybody. I remember when, you know, look, I, I drive a truck for a living. I remember when the cameras came uh, in the trucks, when the Qualcomm's, uh, when the Qualcomm's came and they could track, um, you know, where the truck was at on the road. And they could tell how fast you were going. They could tell uh, how many RPM, how many RPMs you were, what gear you in, how many times you touched the brake. And uh, then the cameras came, and they were fo- facing outward. And look, guys, like, yeah, I love the outward cameras because if I'm in an accident, there's some. But then they had it facing inward, and and it, oh, it's for your protection. No, it's to make sure that you're you're not talking on your phone. It's to make sure that you're not fiddling with the radio or talking on the CB or your your eyes are moving. It's it's constant control. It's constantly being, and look, some will say, well, it's for safety. And for some, I'm not going to argue too, too much. But it's, it's getting that control. It's getting that, that constant, constantly being used to being surveilled. And we do it to our children all the time. Cameras in classrooms. Video cameras everywhere. My kids, you know, when they, they get a computer from the school, there's an agreement that they can turn the camera, they can turn the computers on whenever they want from the schools. And we've heard stories of schools turning the cameras on while the kids are at home. And you go, really? Yeah. Is this the world that we want to live in? In a place where the workplace is, well, constantly surveilling you. You know, 1984 was not a playbook. It was a cautionary tale. And while I'm not a Luddite, now I'm not someone who says we need to smash the machines, we do need to be very very judicious on how we allow them to be used around us and how much power we give AI over us and how much control and how much we give corporate America and government. Look, I'm a big supporter of government only because I believe government is how we collectively do things, all of us together, that we can't do individually. Abuse of government, I'm as, as fearful of and as willing to take on as anybody else. This kind of information can be dangerous. And it's something we've seriously got to fight back against. So, you know, I guess I guess what I'm asking, are you okay with this? You know, I remember telling people, you know, if you ever walk by a UPS truck and you've heard that constant clicking, like there's a clicking as you walk by. I tell you what, that's just to find how long the, the driver's butt's out of the seat because they're, they're timing the driver and how long it takes them to get out to do a delivery. This Amazon app, this takes that to, the, to, the, to a super level. Not only is it how long they're out of the seat, it's how long they're driving, it's how long their, their eyes are fixed on a certain place, it's, you know, it's how long they're waiting at a, their, a red light, how long it takes them to accelerate off of a green light. It is so much information, and a lot of it's even subconscious. This is dangerous stuff. This kind of constant tracking, this kind of constant surveillance, constant harassment 
this is dangerous stuff. And we've got a, a dysfunctional government system that isn't even thinking about this. You know, you hear that automation is going to replace half of the jobs that we currently do within the next 20 years. And Amazon is a driver of that. And yet we've got a government system so dysfunctional because it's mired in, I've stuck my flag in the ground or I, I bought the right hat or I'm on team this or team that, that they're not even thinking policy-wise of how to protect working people from the abuses of corporate America. And that's how corporate America wants it. They love the fact that we're at each other's throat. They love the fact that we're tearing into each other. And we better figure out how to stop it or this this gets worse and it gets worse fast i mean it's already worse than i than i i could have imagined 10 years ago question is what are we going to do about it you going to put up with it well, just happy to have a job is that going to be the mentality or are we going to organize are we going to fight back and say no more love to hear your thoughts email me rick at the ricksmithshow.com the climate crisis is here. These temperatures are almost unbelievable, even for a meteorologist. And the solution is here, too. Clean energy, like wind turbines and solar panels. Now, Congress has to invest in it and in the millions of workers ready to install it across the country. Because in America, we don't hide from problems like climate change. We take them on. We innovate. We lead. Because if we invest in these workers, in their future, at this moment, that's how we build back better. Back to the Rick Smith Show. Check out our website, thericksmithshow.com. Questions, comments, something on your mind, you can email me, Rick, at thericksmithshow.com. So, uh, again, the thought of Sarah Palin in, in the house. Oh, the fun, the entertainment that that would bring us. <laughs> uh, now, the big story today on the right wing uh, was Hunter Biden. Evidently, they are all losing their mind that the Secret Service is paying thirty grand a month to rent a swanky Malibu uh, whole, uh, mansion uh, to protect Hunter Biden. And look, I think it's outrageous that they're paying 30 grand a month to rent a place in Malibu. And this is where I said the same thing about the Trumps, uh, the amount, the obscene amount of money to protect rich people in their environment. Sorry, I think if you want protection, you're going to have to move to Duluth where the rents are a little bit cheaper. Uh, I think you know, if you're going to get Secret Service protection, maybe you need a room that you're going to have to give them. Uh, I, I think we're spending a lot of money on this, and I may be, I may be out on the on the fringe here. Uh, I'm look, we spend so much money on things that we shouldn't, when we should be spending those resources on on feeding hungry children, on on you know finding homes for homeless veterans. On, on ending, you know, childhood poverty, ending homelessness, ending, you know, our dependence on you, you name it. Uh, there are so many things we should be doing with resources, you know, not, not renting a place for 30 grand a month. It just seems obscene to me. Now, the right wants to make it a big deal about, well, it's Hunter Biden. And look, don't care about Hunter Biden, not even a little bit. Uh, did he make some some you know, some crummy deals that that enriched himself? Yeah, a lot of a lot of corporate America does. A lot of the, the politicians, kids do. Yep. Unless you can tie it to a quid pro quo between Biden and the kid that the kid went to him and said, do this, dad, uh, and I can get this. And that there was a quid pro quo agreement that Biden bought into. I don't care about it because I know it's not there. And no one's been able to show that. If you can show me that now we got a different ball of wax. But it's not there, and it's not, and it's not there because it's not there. Uh, they tried, they tried with you know, the 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 laptops everywhere, and you were going to hear a lot more about laptops, and there are going to be investigations if if Democrats lose in November. Which again, if you don't want to hear about laptops every day for for two years, make sure you get registered to vote and get and get out to vote in November, and make sure you vote for 
for a candidate that's going to say, hey, how do we fix our roads and bridges? How do we educate our children? How do we have trade policies that make sure that we we create American jobs? How do we fix our problems instead of mire us in conflict and pointing at each other? Seems seems sane and rational to me. And oh, oh by the way, you know, how do we hold these oil company executives? How do we hold them accountable? How do we lower gas prices? How do we deal with our inflation problems? Because again, I know everyone wants to point at Joe Biden and go, it's all Joe Biden's fault. Reality is inflation, the way it's going on right now, you can blame a lot of it on good old fashioned American greed. Good old fashioned corporate America reaching into your pocket and grabbing out a bunch of dollars because they can. So for me, we need to deal with our supply chain issues. We need to deal with a lot of our, our structural issues. But we also need to rein in corporate America. And I say we do that with a much higher tax rate. Much higher tax rate. Just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours, though. If you've missed any of today's program, the RickSmithShow.com, that's where you go to get the podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. I hear it's fabulous. Something you're going to want to get, share with your friends and neighbors. Also, you can email me, Rick, at the RickSmithShow.com. Uh, welcome to our good friends on the news stations in Wisconsin. I uh, love having you aboard. I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you back here next Rick time. Smith Show. Email Rick. Email Rick. At Rick at the RickSmithShow.com. Until next time, this has been the Rick Smith Show, where working people come to talk.